Hey guys, we are back. Um, please forgive me, some of these videos are going to be a little rough initially. Um, but we'll eventually get there. Um, this is going to be the start of the uh, official series. Um, I don't know how many videos this is going to take. But um, definitely get your popcorn ready. Stay tuned. Because I can assure you of one thing. This is not to get back at anyone. Um, <clears throat> this is not to ruffle any feathers, um, but this is for me to tell my story. I feel the need to, I feel the need that the truth has to get out. I feel like I have to, um, just, just get it out. The journey has begun, um. And I don't think it's going to end here. I have no idea where this is going to take us, like I said before. And we're just going to keep going. And see, see what happens. You know, everything happens for a reason in life, right? And nothing can stop us, right? We have to keep pushing. And whatever's on our plate, we have to kind of accept. And, and, and move on. And, and keep pushing. Try to strive to be better every day. Um, that's one thing it, it has. It, it definitely has humbled me uh, through this whole experience. Because it, it, it was definitely life-changing. Um, from top to bottom. I mean, I'm going to include everything. Um, I have no skeletons in my closet at all. Nothing. Everything is out. Um, but there's a lot of skeletons... In all of your closets. That that I can assure you. Um, so let's see where this takes us. And let, let's enjoy the ride. I mean, hey. This is all about the truth. And the truth is going, is, is going to come out. Um, and that, that's for all. Right? Um, I have no ill will. I love everybody I've worked with for many, many years. I have a lot of good acquaintances, a lot of good friends that came through here. Uh, obviously, I have some uh, some ones that, you know, I pray for every single day. Um, no, I don't wish any ill will on any of you that been part of the um, me losing my job um, or anything like that. But I, I do believe in karma and I believe the truth will come out. So, like I said before, and I'll continue to say, if anybody knows the truth or has heard the truth, you know, you either have my phone number or you can hit my um, email if you don't want to identify yourself. You know, it's uh, Trey, T-R-E-Y-Y, 1975 at gmail.com, or you have my phone number. Simple as that. The people that, that need it or that want it, you know how to get it. There's, there's, well, there's ways around everything. Everybody in there has my phone number. It hasn't changed for over 20 some years now. Uh, 27, eight years now, it, it, I have I had the same phone number. <clears throat> so, without ado, here we go. So, everything started early 2017 when we had a certain administrator start at Albert C. Wagner. Um, we're going we're gonna to call him Mr. Uh, Mr. Don Juan. Because that's how he came in. Um, he came in trying to smooth all the girls. Um, and I'm going to give you several occasions or, or, or several facts that I've experienced personally. I have no reason to lie. Just certain things that I've experienced with this individual. And... Um, that's the only thing I can really speak of. When there's other things that other people can speak of, I'll definitely include that also. <clears throat> but I can tell you, a lot of people are afraid of, um, uh, you know, backstabbing, obviously, as you will. Um, uh, what else? Uh, uh, they're afraid of the new um, policy as far as uh, social media goes. So they can't really come on and tell their full story. Um, but, you know, their their aunts or, excuse me, their wives or, or husbands 
can come in or boyfriends or girlfriends can come in and speak for them. Um, and I know I'm saying I'm um, a lot. I'm just uh, just trying to get all my thoughts together. Um, so here goes. So, yeah, January, February 2017, I was introduced. Um, so I was pretty much introduced to um, D Mr. Don Juan, our administrator at the time. Um, pretty much it was, it was told to him that, um, if he needs any assistance in regards to, um, inmates needed to talk to him or any kind of inmate complaints or anything in general with officers, you know, to call me, I can definitely take care of anything he needs in regards to anything within the jail. If he has, if he has any questions, um, to definitely contact me. Whenever it be, morning, noon, or night. Um, he, did he have my phone number? No, he didn't have my phone number. But whenever I came into jail, um, or if he was, um, if, as administrators, they always come in and they generally are always um, escorted by either uh, majors or lieutenants or sergeants or even officers in some cases. Um, uh, there was plenty of, of officers that did it, not just myself. Um, but yeah, so I, I was called on numerous times as as uh, Mr. Don Juan had, you know, walked through the jail, whether it be, you know, the different wings um, throughout the jail. If he had questions, I would go with him and answer any kind of questions he had. Um, so there was, there was a... Um, Officer Appreciation Day, he asked myself, and um, Turtle Nuts number one, um, which was the IVB at the time of our union, of the institution. <laughs> um, if we would go around and ask everybody throughout the jail, you know, what they wanted for Officer Appreciation Day, and we did just that. We got a whole bunch of information, wrote everything down. So we had also appreciation day. Um, it went pretty smoothly. Everybody got pretty much what they wanted. Um, it, was a, it was a good time. It was, it was, it was much needed. Um, we didn't get all that initially from um, some past administrators, but we also had some very, very good administrators, uh, very, very good administrators. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. Very classy. Um, actually, they're still working today. I don't know if they're in... Um, I, I believe there's still some of them are in police work. Um, but then uh, things had, had gone downhill shortly thereafter. Um, and I, I'm going to get into all that. Um, during the January. During that. So since I started having issues with the uh, actually major Solon Tech, because that's what he is now. He is a major. No longer a lieutenant. moved up. Uh, since I started having issues with uh, Major Swollen Tick, I started having issues with um, Sergeant Gorgeous, um, female, very, very pretty. Um, she was married, later on, you know, changed her name. Um, then there was another uh, um, Sergeant, uh, we'll call him uh, Sergeant High at the time, H-I-G-H, -H, cause that's all he was all the time when he first came in. Um, now lieutenant, clean his act up. Excellent guy now. So no issues. Um, then there's another sergeant. Uh, pretty much call him Big Country. Love flyers. Um, but these guys were all followers of um, uh, of the Major Swollen Tech. So whatever he said is what went. So they were all followers. I confronted each and every one of them. Um, they didn't like the, the confrontation which I asked some questions, um, pretty much just elevated the, um, the situation, which I guess I probably shouldn't have did. Um, but I, I just wanted to know why that they were following such a bad leader, bad representative of, of themselves because what he was doing. Um, if you have an issue, I believe that, you know, you should take it upon yourself with that individual, not try to get everybody else grouped against you also. So it got so bad that um, I actually went to the major's office um, on this, um, I actually went to, uh, um, 
what was it, the uh, administrator, uh, Don Juan, initially let him know what was going on. Just give him a heads up. Um, he told me to follow the uh, chain of command, which I was going to anyways, not an issue. Um, so I went to go talk to um, the one major, which was an excellent guy. Um, we'll call him uh, Major Pretty Boy. So he was a good guy. Everybody liked him. Um, but... It's exactly what he was. He was a pretty boy. I ain't hating on him. Good looking guy. Kept himself well. Always in the gym. Great dude. Have, have nothing bad to say about this guy. Exceptional. I went to him. Uh, talked to him. And that was on uh, July 10th, uh, 2017. Um, approximately 10.45 a.m. Uh, I spoke with him. I uh, let him know everything that was going on. Uh, the harassment with the four or five or six supervisors. Also let him know about the group chat that was going on. Um, he said that he would talk to his supervisors and it would be taken care of. So about, I don't know, I don't know, about a week later, I believe it was. Um, I asked him if he addressed the issue. He said, absolutely. He took care of it. He said, if I had any more issues, please don't be afraid to uh, stop in. Um, doors always open. Guy was an excellent guy. No complaints about this guy whatsoever. Um, he was our, um, I believe, our uh, safety and security, our security major. Um, I told him, I, you know, I appreciate all he did, and I thanked him, you know, because I just wanted to go to work. I was under a lot of stress at that time. Um, and I just wanted to um, just go to work and do my job, you know. Um, they're making it very, very difficult doing my job um, with not giving me the manpower. Because uh, one of our jobs, um, me and another individual that's now terminated also, but he's terminated under another incident, um, which he's got criminal charges um, because DOC wanted, or not so much DOC, but the individuals within DOC wanted two officers. He, they wanted to get them fired. So technically there was, I believe five officers, one sergeant that was terminated and one sergeant that was filming that was not terminated. But I'm under the impression that if you see five or six people, individuals that were doing something wrong, you know, I believe it's our oath that we're supposed to jump in and prevent everything. But for some reason, some odd reason, which, you know, I, I believe we all know is that since his wife the one sergeant says his wife was, was connected with certain individuals uptown. That's why he was never charged. I, I, it, it's crazy. It's a good old boys club in, in uh, New Jersey Department of Corrections. It's who you know and where you can get what. And that's why my incident was never taken care of um, or, or settled or anything like that. They just left me out the, to dry and just continued and, and let me go. And, and we're going to get into all that. Um, with my, with my charges, um, internal charges, nothing on the street and, uh, you know, how everything went down and it, it's going to get interesting because for some things that, that went through that should have never went through, but they did, it's all about who, you know, and, and, and who was behind it and who was pushing it, but it's all good. So now getting back, um, we are getting into, um, now, the second incident that I approached uh, Major Pretty Boy with a well-defined PBA rep. Um, we're going to call him um, uh, I don't even know what to call him. Uh, very, very good friend, work associate, down to earth. Um, he was in prior military, um, always in shape, spoke well, uniform, always pressed, always professional, didn't talk to too many individuals. Um, we're going to, I'm surprised he didn't move up in the ranks because if anyone should have moved up, it was definitely him. He definitely would have made a difference 
in Department of Corrections. Um, we're going to call him, um, man, I don't even know what to call you. But the one thing I can tell you is that, uh, uh, we're going to call you uh, Mr. Great Guy, Mr. Great PBA Rep. And I thank you for accepting uh, when I asked you to um, you know, represent us. Uh, thank you for accepting that because you're, you're definitely one of the ones I pushed as well as another individual that we needed you. Um, he definitely, um, definitely came to bat, um, for me and stood up for what was right. And he witnessed a lot. So, um, long story short, um, that individual PBA rep, um, went to, um, major pretty boy. Uh, they asked me to step outside. So I did, they spoke, uh, they brought me back in. And now since I was making it official with a PBA rep, something had to be done because now it was the second incident that this, uh, that this occurred, that the harassment continued after the major had already spoken to him. So now technically it's official, right? So... After about two or three weeks after he talked to the uh, major, um, it got bad again. It was an off and on thing. And right after that, it got bad again. So as I was um, standing there at the uh, on July 12th, um, I was at the CC3 gate. Um, uh, this is when the one major, um, we're going to call him, he's not retired. We're going to call him Major Coward. Because his whole career, when he was a lieutenant in training, he tried to write me up. Um, the two majors had knocked it down because they knew exactly what it was. It was, it was all bullshit. Um... Uh, he actually came back as a major, and he was one of our majors. So not, I knew that I was outgunned at that point, right? So he, he fa finally came back um, as a major, and um, and here we are, right? Um, standing there, um, he starts, like, making fun of me. Um, let's see. So we had an individual, high-ranking individual, uh, come in. Um, Mr. Coward asked me, hey, you want to escort him around? Joke, like he was acting like he was joking, but he was like serious but sarcastic. And like blowing me kisses at the same time. It's not something you would do as a major, right? You know, we're supposed to be professional at all times. Carries, our, carries our, ourselves with respect, you know, as the... Um, I guess the attorney general for um, Department of Corrections would say. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's at least one incident. Um, so we're going to end it right there. And that's it today, folks. Um, I ha I'm starting a new um, towing company. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's excellent. So if anybody needs a tow, hit that company up and we'll definitely get you what you need. Um, listen, it's a blessing that I got terminated, right? I was such a horrible person inside. Um, it, it's changed me. Um, a lot of things happen for a reason and sometimes you don't understand the reasoning behind it. But I can tell you this is that I was definitely blessed um, for everything that happened. And everything happens for a reason, right? I've been out of there for approximately six years now, maybe even seven. And um, those same people are still in there and they are miserable as some people, good people. 
Real good people. Some people will never change. Um, and that concludes today. All right, guys. I will see you again shortly. And we're definitely going to get into it. And it's going to get saucy. Um, definitely enjoy your stay. Uh, keep that popcorn warm. We're just getting started. Um, it, it's going to get very interesting. It's going to get very, very crazy. I have a lot to say. Um, it's going to get very interesting. This is, I think, approximately a 20-minute video. Um, we'll see. Everybody have a good day. Take care. And uh, hope to see you again. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, get and leave them. I'll answer, follow up with everybody. The negative ones I'm anticipating, it's all good. Negative, positive, right? It get, it's going to get us talking. If it's, if it's happened to anybody else, please, 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 especially in the uh, New Jersey Department of Corrections. There's, there's certain individuals that, that got their jobs back, that, the, that have done worse things than what I've done. That's what I'm saying. Like My th stuff is so minute. When I talk to other chiefs of police departments um, throughout the state, um, state troopers, whether they be sergeants, corporals, majors, um, was it lieutenant colonels? They all say the same thing. So, hey guys, we'll be back at you. Not soon enough. You guys take care. I'll see you soon. Have a great day.